it can be super convenient to add an outline stroke to your text. This makes sure that texts become more legible if they are unplotted on top of something where there's a lot going on. For example, if you have a scatter plot with a lot of points in it and you want to have text on top of that, it can be hard to read text if you don't put in an outline stroke to make sure that the text is legible. Unfortunately, ggplot cannot do that part on its own. But there is the shadow text package that helps you get this job done and this is what I'm going to show you in this video, so let's dive in. In our studio, I've created a new Koto file into which I have put in a new code chunk where we load the tidyverse and also the penguins data set from the Parma penguins package. And what we're going to do first is to recreate this chart here. Basically, it is a scatter plot that we create just like we normally would with ggplot. And then we want to add these labels using the shadow text package. To do so, let us pass our data set to ggplot where we specify the aesthetics. On the x-axis, we can see that we're using the build length millimeters column. On the y-axis, we see that we use the flipper length column. And as the fill aesthetic, I like to use the species so that the points get colored by the species. And then I put in a geom point layer. And in order for the fill aesthetic to work, I set shape to 21, which makes sure that these are filled points. And that way I get a chart like this. And right now the points are really small, so let's make them larger by setting size to four. Next, let us do a quick and easy theme change via the theme minimal layer, where we set the base size to 16 and the font family to Source Sense Pro, so that the chart looks a little bit nicer overall and the text are more legible. Then we're also going to remove the legend because we're going to put in the colored labels inside of the scatter plot directly. And this one looks like this. Now to place the species label inside of the plot, we need to make sure that we have coordinates for these. While this might be fun to watch me try to work out coordinates until it looks nice, let me just give you the coordinates that I have prepared for this occasion. Here I have put in together a new tibble that has the names Adelie, Gen2 and Chinstrap inside of it and then X and Y coordinates that I want to use for those labels. So if you execute this and call the new variable, you will see that for each species I have an X and Y coordinate and these were coordinates that I've just chosen by trying out a lot of coordinates until I figured that these coordinates look good enough. Now with this data set I can create text labels at these specific coordinates and I can usually do that with a GM text layer but this will not give me an outline of the species labels but let's worry about that later. Let's first get the text in there. So let's put in a GM text layer. As the data set for this layer, we need to say that it's supposed to use this new data set that we've just created, the ones with the coordinates of the labels. And then we can specify the aesthetics that we need here. The X aesthetic is just the X coordinate. The Y aesthetic is the Y column. The color of the label is supposed to be the species. And the label that we put in here is also supposed to be the species. And then if I execute this, we get labels that look like this. Right now they don't look great. So let's modify them. Let's make them larger. Let's make them bold. And then let's use the same font family as before. And now to make the text have outlines, we need to call the shadow text package. And this is really where the magic happens. If we want to create the labels and make sure that they have outline, we need to call the shadow text package. Let's execute this so that we have access to all of the geoms from there. And then we can use geom shadow text. This one works exactly like the text layer so that we don't need to modify anything in here, but we need to specify what color the outline is supposed to have. And we do that via the BG color argument. And in there we specify that we want to use a black outline. And then we get the black outline like this. Next, let us create this bar chart here. We can see here that in this bar chart, the Gen2 labels are highlighted via the outline and all the other words are just left as it is. So just like before, let us first create the bar chart and then worry about how to use GM shadow text later on. To do all of that, let us create a new code chunk where we can work on this. And in there, we take the penguins data set and pass it to count to count the species. And then we save this into a new variable that we call penguin count. And now that we have this data set, we take it and pass it to ggplot. And as always, we first define the aesthetics the X aesthetic is supposed to be the count that we have inside of our data set. The Y aesthetic is supposed to be the species and the fill aesthetic of the bars is also supposed to be the species. And then we can put a GM call layer on top of this. And if we execute this, we get a basic chart like this. Just like before, we can enhance it by using theme minimal. And then we can get rid of the legend because here is really no use. The labels already tell us 
which color corresponds to which species. Finally, let us add a couple of labels. In the title, I'll use counts of penguin species, and that way we don't need an X label. We could really also put in the same thing for the Y aesthetic, because it is kind of clear that these names are penguin species. But here it's really not necessary because in the next step we are going to remove the complete axis here and then replace that with GM text. So that's why we're going to set the axis title to element blank. We're also going to set the line to element blank and we're going to remove the axis text completely. And we're going to set the tick length to zero. Notice how this gave us a little bit more space. Or rather it reduced the space more and that way we got rid of all of the things that are in there. Next we can put in the labels again via a GM text layer. So this means we add a GM text layer and for the aesthetics of that layer we use as the X aesthetic negative one, as the color we'll use species and for the label we'll use species as well. This one will give us a label like this, but we should probably make sure that everything is right aligned so we set H just to one. Similarly, we can increase the size, we can change the font family and we can make it bold. These were just the standard changes that I want to use anyway. But if I look at the image, I can see now that this doesn't look too great because the labels are cut off. So that's why I modify the coordinate system and set the X limit to values so that this looks nice. And with that, we can see the labels completely again. But now that we see the labels here, we can also see that these horizontal grid lines kind of go through the labels and that makes them a little bit hard to read. So let's remove them by setting panel.grid.major.y to element blank. Nice, much better that way. And really for a horizontal bar chart like this, there's really no use of horizontal grid lines. Now, all that is left to do is to create a vector that has different outline colors depending on the species. So for the species Chinstrap and Adderley, I would like to have white outline so that it is not visible. And for the Gen 2 species, I would like to have black outline. The perfect function to create such a vector is the if else function, because we can put in the species column from the penguin counts data set in there. This will give us a vector like this and then by setting this equal to gen 2 or asking whether this is equal to gen 2 we know exactly that in this case we should have some color say black and in the other ones we should have white so that's really what we put in here here i've decided to not use black but something which is close to black often that looks a little bit better than pure black and then once i have this vector this is how it looks i can save this into a new variable called bg colors and then i can copy and paste this make this into shadow text and inside of the bg colors argument i can use this vector and here this didn't work because i did a really stupid typo i put in bg underscore colors but really what i needed to do is bg color and now it works like expected it's a bit of a shame that this shadow text package doesn't throw an error because i misspelled this here but luckily we can figure this out on our own too and with that, we have learned how to get outlines into our text using the shadow text package. I hope that you enjoyed this video. As always, you can find all of the code that we have in this video in our blog post that we link in the description of this video. And with that said, have a nice day and see you next time.